Hi, I'm Melina Wang, and welcome to Discovering China. Today, we will be looking at Han Couture, the traditional clothing of the Chinese people. We will look at the origins of the clothing style and talk to Amy Lee, head judge at NTD's Han Couture Design Competition. We will also visit the National Palace Museum in Taipei to find out why the artifacts could one day be displayed in mainland China. So first, let's take a look at the background of Han Couture. When people think of ancient Chinese clothing, they most often picture long, tapered silk garments with draping sleeves and embroidered patterns. These dresses are known as Han Couture or Han Fu. Though the name associates it with the Han Dynasty, Han Fu has become a term to describe clothing that followed the Han style worn up until the Ming Dynasty in the 17th century. The term Han Fu comes from the Book of Han, which states that the Han Chinese clothing enchanted many who visited the imperial court. Han Fu has also been considered one of the great imprints of Chinese culture, not only through its aesthetic beauty in the garments, but the clothing also represents the cultural ideals and values of each dynasty. The couture of the Han and Qin dynasties were more traditional and conservative, while that of the Tang Dynasty was more lavish and luxurious. The Tang Dynasty, China's golden age, was considered the height of Hanfu. The extravagance and wealth of the Tang led to luxuriously styled clothing. The Tang Hanfu was almost exclusively made of silk, as most people were wealthy enough to afford it. This is the reason why many Western sources referred to Hanfu as Chinese silk robes. Yet Han Couture is much more than just a silk garment. Each part of the clothing represents something deeper in meaning. The large circular cuffs represent a round, heavenly path, while the cross collar is derived from an early road. The seam in the back of the dress represents humans walking between heaven and earth, while the tied waistband is a symbol of humans being tied to heavenly rules. While many marvel at the intricate design and graceful and elegant looks of the garments, what lies in the meaning of these silk garments should not be forgotten. Since 2008, NCD Television has held three global Han Couture design competitions. The purpose is to revive the traditional values of right etiquette purity, wisdom, beauty, and virtue embodied in this traditional style of Han Chinese clothing. Margaret Tri now talks to Amy Lee, head judge of the competition about Han Couture and its inner meanings. Sublime beauty, elegance and grace describe the clothing of traditional Chinese people. Han couture or Han Chinese clothing, also known as Han Fu, had been worn for millennia before the Manchus invaded China and established the Qing dynasty in 1644. The legendary Yellow Emperor was believed to have worn this style of clothing. NTD Television has been holding a Han Couture design competition as part of its global competition series. Han Couture competition head judge Amy Lee talks about the use of different color shades to create a stunning effect. The overall effect of this outfit is very beautiful. It uses a very coordinated set of shades of purple. From the structure of this style, on the outside you have big sleeves, and inside it has a very high skirt that reaches above the chest and it's fastened there. So inside you have the skirt and beneath that the pants. The four pieces together make up the whole outfit. This style is very typical of the Tang Dynasty, particularly the middle to late periods of the Tang Dynasty. It is normally accompanied by a relatively big hairstyle. Each dynasty has its own unique style to distinguish the status of officials. 
刚才那个官府是在颜色上区分的它的级别的哈。During the Tang Dynasty, the ranks of officials were distinguished by different color clothing. 都是区别不大，就是说。The Song Dynasty was the same, but the differences in the clothing were not significant. When it got to the Ming Dynasty, they wore not only different colors, but more importantly, they had symbols. They had a square piece of cloth, the same on the front and the back, a stitch picture to indicate an official's rank. 是那个织锦刺绣的图案，那么它是用这上面的嗯图案来来标志这个。关节的高低。Today, Han Couture is sometimes worn as part of a historical presentation during festivals or weddings, and people feel transported back to the past. When people put on Han Couture, they feel, "Wow, why did ancient people wear these kinds of clothes?" That's because there is a deeper principle and meaning behind Han Couture. It conveys righteous etiquette. Purity, beauty, and virtue. Through its global Han Couture competition, NTD Television's endeavor to revive these ancient values has had a positive impact. We have held the competition three times, in 2008, 2009, and 2010. We all see very clearly the biggest change in our contestants. They have matured in their understanding of Han Couture, the pure Han Couture that embodies the inner meaning of traditional culture. The contestants come to understand the essence behind Han Couture and integrate that with the designs. Lee talks about the maturing process. The first year, we discovered the pieces still had a way to go. Through the first and second time, they're going through a process. By the third competition in 2010, we discovered that over 90 percent of the contestants had matured. Contestants gain a deeper understanding of traditional Chinese culture. Wearing these clothes, how they should talk, how they should salute, how they should bow, they need to think of these issues. So through researching Han Couture for the competition, the contestants study many profound things from Chinese culture. Thus, every masterpiece seeks to recreate and restore the traditional Chinese culture of courtesy, wisdom, elegance, and etiquette that has been largely lost especially in mainland China. This year, NTD's fourth global Han Couture design competition will take place in September, with the semi-finals, finals and award ceremony held in New York. Now since the Chinese Civil War, many of China's national treasures have been housed in the National Palace Museum in Taipei, Taiwan. This was likely a good thing, since many artifacts and cultural relics were destroyed in the mainland during the Communist Cultural Revolution. But now there is a possibility that these artifacts could one day be displayed in the mainland. Here's why. Could artifacts and artworks from Taiwan's National Palace Museum be exhibited in mainland China? Depending on politics in the mainland, it could be a possibility. Feng Ming Chu, the director of the National Palace Museum in Taipei, recently announced a plan for a new exhibit in Japan, the first time the museum's pieces will be lent to another Asian country. This year, we have two special exhibitions in cooperation with the mainland Chinese. The first one, the national display, is planned for this May and October. The May exhibition will be Renoir, while the October exhibition is the Mona Lisa display. In 2014, we will go to Japan to display. The overseas exhibition in Japan is made possible because of the Japanese government passing a law two years ago that streamlines the process of borrowing the museum's pieces. The museum insists this non-detainment law needs to be in place before any country is allowed to borrow artifacts or artwork. The law affirms that the country that borrows the pieces will promptly return them. If mainland China wanted to borrow pieces from the museum, it too would have to pass such a law. However, the mainland Chinese regime is still unwilling to pass this law. Therefore, the museum as of yet cannot exhibit in China. 
This issue really depends on whether the country that wants to borrow can take the initiative to solve the problem themselves. The solution is straightforward. The only two criteria are the exhibitions must be in the National Palace Museum's name and that all borrowed artwork needs the law's protection and insurance. Borrowing pieces for the National Palace Museum would be in China's interest. Many of the pieces were originally brought to Taiwan from the mainland as the Nationalist Army lost the Chinese Civil War to the Communists in 1949. Yet with no law yet passed to offer protection, it could be some time before the National Palace Museum exhibits in China. Thank you for watching Discovering China. I'm Alina Wang and we will be bringing you more on Chinese history and culture next week. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash NCD Discovering China. See you soon.